So hello and welcome friends to our channel IntroMac and here we discuss about basic mechanical engineering concepts. So today we are going to discuss that how we can select a pneumatic linear actuator or specifically a double acting pneumatic cylinder on the basis of our system inputs. So without wasting time, let's get started. Now here you could see that I have to move a block having a mass of mkg from distance x to distance y. Now for this application, I can have a pneumatic cylinder, but I don't know what will be its size. So first let's see what are my system inputs. The mass is 30 kg and the distance between X and Y is 100 mm. Now I can push this block with the help of pneumatic cylinder. Now what is the physics in this? Let's see the forces acting in this case. Now here you could see the mass will be acting in the downward direction that is the weight of the body which is nothing but m times g and your normal reaction the reaction offered by the surface which is again equal to your weight and my block is moving in this direction so the frictional force which is mu times rn will be acting in the opposite direction now in order to move my block from x to y direction i have to overcome this frictional force Right, so how we can find out this frictional force? Let's see. So we have a simple calculations here. We know the mass of the body, so weight will be G times M, that will be 294.3 Newton. And now the value of mu, so the value of coefficient of friction will be dependent on your material of the block and the material of the surface. Now on the safer side, let's consider the value as 1. So the frictional force will be 294.3 Newton. So now I know that in order to move my block from x to y distance, I want a minimum force of 294.3 Newton. So this much amount of force should be generated with the help of this pneumatic cylinder. So let's see how we can select that. Now we have to log in into the SMC site and you can see my previous session for that. So as soon as you log in into this site, you have to go to the products and the actuators in the linear actuators. So we can go for the standard cylinder as we don't have any specific requirement here and a standard series, which is a CDQ series. Now, when you go into this, there will be the code generation window but first we have to go for the series catalog now when you go on the series catalog you will get this catalog now in this catalog they have mentioned the compact cylinder you can observe the minimum diameter bore diameter and the maximum bore diameter then as you navigate this you can see what are the different series and what are their specification available so we have to go so the bores and the sizes are given there and then what are the mountings available you can see here according to your application you can select the mountings but right now we are more concerned about selecting the bore size so let's get into that so we have to go for a standard product unless until we have any specific requirement. So let's have a standard product. So here you can see that the standard catalog is here and the standard series we can consider with the auto switch and the most important part in this series is the three number which is nothing but your bore size and the final number which is nothing but the stroke which is nothing but the distance between x y so we require a stroke of 100 mm now how we can select the bore size whether we have to go for 20 25 32 so that is the main requirement so let's see how we can select that the other specifications are given here like what is the bore sizes available then what is the maximum operating pressure you can see here that is one megapixel that is 10 bar then what is the maximum piston speed and the stroke length tolerance is also given so that you can get the positional accuracy you can decide the positional accuracy and 
here the most interesting part now the calculation part so they have mentioned the kinetic energy of the body say the kinetic energy is nothing but one half m square so m1 is nothing but the mass of the cylinder on the moving parts then m2 is the load mass and v is the piston speed so we are not uh, concerned about this right now so again there is a graph for the lateral road on the rod if you could see the lateral load is acting in the downward direction but in our current application there is no such a lateral load so if we have a lot lateral row load after selecting the bore size we have to check that into the graph here so we have to check the cylinder stroke and the bore and the allowable lateral load and we have to see that whether it comes under the allowable limit or not now this is important the theoretical output in this chart they have mentioned how much force we can get from the cylinder of different bore sizes you can see the bore size operating direction and the operating pressure they have mentioned the forces for say 0 0.3 0 0.5 and 0.7 mega pascal that is uh, nothing but uh, 3 bar 5 bar and 7 bar so according to our system input we have to see the forces so we know that our input our force requirement is 294 newton so you can see the 32 bore size have a force of say 302 newton and 402 newton like in and out now what is this in and out we will see so we can select this 32 mm bore diameter for the cylinder and let's see now here you could see the same chart and as we have selected a 32 mm bore size cylinder so when you scroll down into the manual you can get its dimensional details what is its overall size then what are the tapping sizes what is its rod diameter so we have seen here the two forces so what are they so let's discuss first the in that means the pressure is acting in this direction and my rod is getting retracted okay now how we can calculate the force that how we have ended up with this value there are simple calculations we all know that pressure is nothing but force upon area so what will be the force it is nothing but pressure into the effective area now area plays important role here now in the first case the pressure is acting on the rod side right so what will be my effective area so if you could see here my rod diameter will get subtracted from my piston diameter or bore diameter right now what is the size of my rod now here we have selected 32 bore size so here you could see the d size and in th this chart you can find out the value of d which is 16 so my rod diameter is 16 mm so you can find out this value from this catalog now how you can find out the force that is nothing but pi by 4 your d2 your d1 square minus d2 square so this will be your effective area in this case so your d1 it is nothing but the bore size which you have selected that is 32 mm minus 16 square into your pressure we are considering 0.5 mpa so this will end up into a force of 302 newton which is the same value mentioned in this chart right so this is for the in now let's see for the out now for the out you can see the pressure is acting on the piston side now on the piston side the area is the total area of the piston right so the diameter of the piston it will be 32 mm or it will be slightly lesser than 32 mm as there is clearance between the bore and the piston so what will be the force pi by 4 d square into the diameter of the piston right 32 square into your 
pressure so this will be 402 newton so that's why there are two different values mentioned in the catalog and according to application we have to uh, see that which force is acting now in our application we are pushing the block like this so that's why we are we can take the value of f out that is nothing but 402 newton right and that's why we have selected this 32 mm bore size cylinder now what will be the factor of safety now factor of safety is also important while selecting this uh, cylinder and it depends on your application your criticality of the application now what will be the factor of safety in this case so the factor of safety is nothing but the actual force which are which we are getting with the help of cylinder and what is the required force so actual force we are getting like 402 newton right and the required force was 294.3 newton which we had calculated earlier so the factor of safety in this case will be like 1.37 which is fairly good and we can go with this cylinder so this is how we have selected the bore size which is the most important factor while selecting any pneumatic linear actuator so having selected this let's see how we can complete the our code so after selecting the bore you just have to go here we have taken the built-in size then you can take a foot mounting for the mounting purpose we know the distance uh, we have selected and the 100 mm distance we require that's why we have taken stroke as 100 mm the other sensor parameters you can fill and after filling this your product will be ready you will get the complete code here so this is how you can select your complete code of your cylinder and after that uh, you know that you can download the 3d model like uh, from the bottom side and you can put that into your assembly and you can use that so this is how you can select any pneumatic linear actuator with the help of your system inputs so these are very basic calculations and i have tried to explain them from the basics so i hope you understood all these things and have an idea that what are the values are mentioned in the catalog and how you can navigate through the graphs and these values and how you can finally select your linear actuator so thank you for patient listening and if you have any doubts please do write into the comment section and we can discuss over there until then stay home stay happy thank you